Getting used to life with just fudge, we find a great park up in the history-filled village of Dunwich on the Suffolk coast, where I get to swim and all three of us visit the fascinating local museum. But first, welcome to our channel. We are a retired couple, Kath and Sue, and have been travelling and living in our motorhome for over two years. We started this adventure as four, but we have sadly recently lost Archie, our brave old boy, and now continue as three with our loyal little girl, Fudge. As the summer ends and the autumn begins, we cherish the happy memories and look forward to more memorable moments with Fudge by our side. Good morning. This park up is in a place called Dunwich, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about later because it's got a fascinating history. But we completely forgot to pick up any shopping yesterday. Our minds were elsewhere. If you watched last week's video, you will understand why. But this is a field, it's owned by the church. You can park here uh, during the day or overnight uh, by way of a donation. And they make a suggested donation of a pound if you park during the day and five pounds if you park overnight, which is just absolutely brilliant. Now there's no particular services here, but just a short distance in that direction is the beach. And there's a cafe and some public toilets at the beach and plenty bins there as well. It really is just a short walk. So uh, we stayed here last night. I think we're going to stay for another night as well because it is just so nice. And I might even take a swim later on this afternoon. But first things first. Sue is going foraging for us. Well, hunter gathering. She's going to the shop. There's a, we can see there's a little village uh, not far from here, about two and a half miles from here, and there is a little village shop. So hopefully she'll be able to at least get some milk and a few provisions uh, for uh, today for lunch and possibly dinner. There's a pub also in that direction, which we may have lunch at. Anyway, in the meantime, come and enjoy the rest of the day with us. <laughs> just been debating how you say the name of the place that we're at at the moment so it's spelt Dunwich with a W but is it Dunwich? Anyway this was once a thriving metropolis in medieval times often referred to apparently as the Atlantis of East Anglia on a par with London in terms of size with 3,000 residents in 1086. Now there's only a hundred on the electoral register and apparently only about 50 permanent residents. We're going to go and find out a little bit more about this little village at the museum. Well this is the museum, it's free but there is a place for a donation and they recommend about three pounds. We put a tenner in for both of us so uh, but we're just about to get the story of the lost city. So the model is based on Dunwich in its heyday which was 1250. So the yellow dotted line is the coastline as it is today. So this is Dunwich Village, population yep. of about 80. Yeah. In its heyday, population 5,000. Wow. Which meant that it was the uh, sixth largest town in the country, and indeed about a third of the size of London. New Year's Eve of 1286, there's a storm surge that lasted for three days. And also uh, the sea deposited a shingle bank, basically closed off the port which meant that the town was no longer viable. Yeah. As we wandered through the museum, we learned that 300 people lost their lives in the great storm, and over the following years the sea crept inland, enveloping the once thriving city. Twelve churches were lost to the sea, and local legend suggests you hear the bells ringing beneath the waves during storms. Apparently, the ghost of a young woman roams the village and the beach, looking for her lost love who perished in the great storm. 
And, and you must know, take it easy to make a living just from the land, or oh, like your old dad from fishing. So this little business helps make ends meet. Huh? Inside it, it's fantastic for kids. It's, it's a little remade smuggler's hut and a bit of storytelling as well. Well, I have to say, I think that's the nicest museum I've been to. It's small, so it doesn't take you a long time to get around it. It's very specific because it is about the history of Dunwich and its decline, mainly through coastal erosion. And if you want to go for free, you can, but they do actually ask for a, a, a donation, which I think is brilliant. And if you think, back to the videos we did a couple of months ago in Dent where you had to pay quite a lot of money to get into that museum. That's the way to do it. We just walked out and the lady there was giving a £50 donation. So it leaves it down to people's discretion and what they can actually afford. I think that's, that's great. And best of all today is we're going to stop for some lunch at the Ship Inn, which is the one pub but it looks incredibly busy and judging by the cars parked down the street on a on a Wednesday, I think we're going to be in for a good treat. Cheers. We've had a lovely lunch, and we've decided to go and have a look at. I think it's called the Grey Friars Friary. Well, we can see it here. We've come up a footpath. We actually think you can't get to it from here. So we're going to go back down the footpath and up the road. Grey Friars Friary is a scheduled monument looked after now by a trust and it's one of the remaining buildings that's still standing from the medieval Dulwich. Fascinating isn't it? Very very beautiful even though it is just ruins. found out about this when we are in the museum, but this behind me is the last grave of the medieval church. It was uh, the medieval church of All Saints and it crumbled off the, um, off the cliffside through the coastal erosion. And it reads, I'm going to have to read it, in memory of Jacob Forster who departed this life March the 12th, 1796, aged 38 years, which might have been a pretty good age for that time. Well, we're heading down to the beach again. Going in. All I can say, if you can hear me, is this is nowhere near as cold as the last time that I went in water. This is positively warm in comparison. I'm just going to get my goggles on so I can actually swim. Here goes. <laughs> Trying to swim and talk to you at the same time is always a challenge. But this water is absolutely lovely. Anyway, I'm going to give the camera back to Sue now so I can go for an actual swim. See you later. You ready?
Well, after my ice cream yesterday, we got back, had tea, and today we've moved on to a new location. Now it is just a stopover. We were in the Suffolk area, and that was because we were hoping to kind of do that coast. But do you know what? Everywhere we looked on the coast was really, really expensive. So we're doing a one night stopover. It's one of the Campra airs it's by marina i'll put the details on the screen it's 10 pounds you can actually just use the services here so you could fill up with water and use the elson point just for five pounds but we're staying the night and it's right on the edge of a canal so why not come for a walk with us now we're lost already <laughs> Well, we're not really lost. It's not that way either. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> no, it should be straight up there. Okay, so what Isu is telling me, his OS maps are telling us, he's straight up there. There is no obvious path. We'll have to forge our own. If we're going that way. Okay. I'm following her. We've given up, we're back down by the canal path, we're just going to go and out and back. You can probably hear, it's really noisy here, because you're very, very close to the M6 motorway. Not, not by car, we had to, it was about 10 minutes off the slip road to here, but the actual canal must go under the motorway at some point, so it's actually really noisy. It's okay for an overnighter. I'm out of breath because we've just had a race and I thought Sue would go as soon as I started running she didn't so she's the last to touch the bridge that means last one oh Fudge hasn't touched it she's that means filthy. yeah of course she's filthy of course you're filthy aren't you hey you know what that means Sue you're the, you're the silly ass. the last to touch it. I just wanted to let you win. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Does that prove that you love me? Yes. Yeah. Shuffle one. Uh, my what? You shuffle one. I'll do that again. <laughs> Is that an impression? <laughs> well, that's it. We're going to head back and just probably put the TV in because the rain is getting heavier. So we'll see you tomorrow. Morning, the sun's out again. And yesterday Sue made the call that we were gonna go to somewhere happy after our last week. We feel some time in the hills, it's gonna be really good. So we're making the second half of our journey we're on our way to the Lake District. Our happy place. We'll see you when we get there. Well, our happy place and the sun's come out. So we're going to have some lunch. I think Sue's planning to take, go to the laundrette today and do some washing. And then we'll have a look at what walks we can do over the next couple of days. Really looking forward to that. Getting lost in the hills. Oh, lost in our thoughts in the hills. One advantage of being in Ambleside, an area that we know really well, is we know where everything is and we've got chores today. We really need to do some washing. Sue's run out of running kit, so we're gonna head off to the laundrette. Well, we've got 25 minutes now to make the most of Ambleside. So 
Sue and I have both got some birthdays coming up. So, you never know, we might find something. We're two for a penny But they've all gone out the window of this <laughs> car And when I feel Go on, stick it on, let's have a look at it. On my face Beautiful. <laughs> I've left Sue in the laundrette just doing a final bit of folding. I'm Fudge and I are heading back to the van so I can get my walking boots on and we're just going to go for a short afternoon stroll uh, down by the river. Well, Fudge and I are here at a familiar spot by the river. The water's quite high actually show you. There's normally a beach here. It's right up to the edge now. Are you thirsty fudge? Well, I thought I'd talk to you about what we're doing to help with fudge's grief, losing her best buddy. And Sue's done quite a lot of research and they broadly say the same thing. But in particular the Dogs Trust talks about not moving the deceased pets things too soon so in the van we've still got Archie's bowl where it's always been and his beds where it's always been and they tell you to watch your pet's behavior watch out for them you know panting or shaking or or, or being visibly distressed and we haven't seen any of that with fudge and also to stick to their regular routine and take them to familiar places and new places and because we're constantly on the road we're very often in new places. That's one of the reasons why we've come back to Ambleside because this is a familiar walk for her. Uh, and there are a number of walks here that are quite familiar, so we'll probably do a couple of those. The one thing that we have noticed is she won't go into Archie's bed. Now, there's, there's always been a lot of bed swapping between the pair of them, but initially, even though I was sat the other side of it, she just wouldn't step across and sit in Archie's bed. But today is the first day she has done that and she's even had a little snuggle down in it. So I think she's all right. We're obviously going to be keeping a close eye on her, sticking to our routine and trying to pretend as far as she's concerned that nothing's changed. I think it rained quite heavily here yesterday. I've just been talking to some people who said this bit that I'm walking on now was all flooded and they're surprised at how quickly it's dried off. I'm amazed at how high the water is in comparison to the last time I was here. I was in your way, Fudge. Well, behind me here, out there it used to be a little island all the birds used to just stand on there and sit on there and take their little chicks onto there it's completely completely submersed it's almost like that first time we came here when that crossing was completely submerged under the water didn't realize it had actually been so wet here obviously it has i mean we've been it's been dry where we've been so we haven't really taken much notice of the weather in the Lake District has obviously been really wet. Nice day today though. From Well, that was nice. We ended up chatting to a local who lives here for a while, and uh, and now we're heading back. Excuses were too for a penny, but they've all gone out the window. Well, after a very busy few days, I think we will leave this video here. By the time you see us next week, we won't have moved, but we are planning some decent walks so hopefully you'll get a chance to see those next week but for now thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time
Yes, I could. Yeah.